расскажет нам о том, как он диагностирует колоритальное образование и как это делаем мы. Да, 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 конечно. Водные лекции, пожалуйста. Пожалуйста. Please. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Oh, sorry for my bad voice. Um, it's a great pleasure to participate in the interactive training session. So let me first talk about how to diagnose correctal polyps and cancers in colonoscopy based on the Japanese experience. Then let's do the quiz um, using several clinical cases. So first, uh, talk about uh, this kind of issue. And uh, as you know, the colonoscopy is composed of several aspects, including insertion, detection, diagnosis, and treatment. And detection itself is performed in white light imaging, and diagnosis is performed first by white light imaging, then followed by image enhanced endoscopy, such as NBI. If necessary, chroma endoscopy can be performed, and if you have the colonoscope with the function of magnification, magnifying endoscopy is also uh, helpful. So let me show you one video. Actually, this is the same video I showed you the day before yesterday. However, it's a good example how to use colonoscopy in the daily practice. First, the lesion is detected in the white light image, then switch to the narrow band imaging, and we can visualize the lesion belly clearly. And if you use the magnification, the vascular pattern and the surface pattern of the lesion are beautifully visualized. And then, at this moment, we can diagnose this lesion is an intramucosal neoplastic lesion, low-grade dysplasia, and we can understand that this lesion is a good indication for endoscopic resection. So, uh, what can we do with NBI magnification? Actually, we can do histological diagnosis and depth diagnosis. So previously, uh, we proposed the capillary pattern classification, so-called Sanos classification, focusing on the vascular pattern on colorectal lesions. And the diagnostic accuracy of this classification is reported to be high with regard to the histological diagnosis and depth diagnosis. And recently, with the development of NBI, uh, sorry, NBI imaging, we can get the brighter NBI imaging. So, thanks to that development, not only vessel pattern, but also surface pattern can be visualized very clearly. And previously, we have many, many classification regarding magnified narrowband magnify NBI diagnosis. However, recently Japanese experts gathered in one room and discussed very well and developed the one uh, universal classification, the so-called JNET classification. JNET classification is based on the vessel pattern and the surface pattern and the classifications are classified into the four subgroups from type 1 to type 2A, type 2B and type 3. So, from the next slide, uh, let me explain each of the subgroup. First, type 1, if no clear... Sorry. Okay. If no clear visible vessels are observed in the lesion and the surface pattern itself is regular. Regular means a regular dark spots or white spots are observed in the lesion. In that case, the lesion is diagnosed for JNET type 1 and it indicates non-neoplastic lesion, usually hyperplastic lesion. Then, what about type 2A? Actually, type 2A is most often uh, observed in the lesion maybe, uh, in your daily practice. Um, actually, in vessel pattern, um, regularly lining the vessel and the surrounding the normal peak, normal peak means the normal regular structure uh, is observed. In that case, this lesion is classified as JNA type 2A, and JNA type 2A usually indicates a tubular adenoma, low-grade intramucosal neoplasia. And how about JNA type 2B? If you can see an irregularity in the vessel pattern or surface pattern, you can easily tell that this. Oh, I cannot point, but uh, you can easily tell that the irregularity of the vessel pattern and the surface pattern can be observed in these lesions. In that case, the lesion is classified for JNET type 2B, and JNET type type 2B actually indicates 
usually high-grade interim causal neoplasia or superficial submucosal invasive cancer. But most important point is sometimes there's also possibility for deep submucosal invasive cancer. So only with magnified NVI diagnosis, it is difficult to diagnose the lesion with JNA type 2B is deep submucosal invasive cancer or no. So in this case, if you find the findings of type 2B, JNA type 2B finding, we have to advance to the diagnosis using magnified chromoendoscopy, so-called pit pattern diagnosis is required. This is the most important point, I believe that. And if you can see the loose vessel areas, so sponge vessel patterns and amorphous area, in that case the lesion is classified for JNA type 3. And JNA type 3 um, with high confidence indicates a deep submucosal invasive cancer requiring the surgical treatment. So in this case, even without crystal violet staining, we can diagnose this lesion is deep submucosal invasive cancer. So let me summarize the JNET classification. Type 1 is a um, non-neoplastic lesion. Type 2A is low-grade intramucosal neoplasia, tubular adenoma. And type 2B includes many things, uh, intramucosal neoplastic lesion and superficial submucosal lesion. Sometimes there's also a possibility for deep submucosal invasive cancer. So if you see the type 2B, you need to advance to the magnifying chromoendoscopy pit pattern diagnosis. Okay. And if you see the type 3 JNET classification, in that case the lesion is considered to be indicated for surgical resection usually. And how about if you don't have the colonoscopy with the function of magnification? Actually, I want to emphasize that JNET classification is based on the magnified NBI endoscopy. So, if you don't have the colonoscope with the function of magnification, in that case, I have to say that you cannot use the JNET classification because without the function of magnification, the discrimination between type 2A and type 2B is really difficult and challenging. So, in that case, you have to use nice classification. Actually, nice classification is very good classification, but only one in nice classification is very good and well corresponded with the JNET classification. However, as you can see here, the only inconvenient thing for nice classification is the nice classification type 2 includes many, many things. So from adenoma, intramucosal cancer, superficial submucosal cancer, and also there's also a possibility of deep submucosal invasive cancer. So I think that based on my experience in Japan, if you can get the scope with magnification, that will be very helpful because we can more detail do the historical diagnosis and depth diagnosis. And let me talk about next the magnifying chromoendoscopy diagnosis, so-called pit pattern classification. Uh, many of you already know that there are several pit patterns from type 1 pit to type 5 pit. So let me review several pit patterns here. Uh, type 1 pit is observed in the normal mucosa, non-neoplastic mucosa. Round pit is called as a type 1 pit. And type 2 pit is still a shaped pit, is classified for type 2 pit, and it is uh, often observed in the hyperplastic polyp. And how about these pit patterns? So, type 3 L pit is most often observed in your daily practice. Uh, this indicates the adenoma and the tubular pit is seen. In that case, the lesion is, uh, the pit pattern of the lesion is classified as type 3 L pit. And if you see the dendritic like pit patterns or gyrus like pit pattern, in that case, the pit pattern is called as a type 4 pit. It also indicates the intramucosal neoplastic lesion, sometimes high-grade dysplasia. And then you have to remember type 3 S pit also. Type 3 S pit is sometimes uh, observed in the LSD non-granular type lesion. Um, actually, the belly is smaller around the pit and smaller than type 1 pit. 
and uh, this pit pattern also indicates the interim causal neoplastic lesion. And if you see these kinds of type pit patterns, in that case, we can easily understand that the lesion is indicated for endoscopic treatment because the lesion is interim causal neoplastic lesion. And the problem is, how about the type 5 pit? If you see non-structural pit patterns, in that case, the pit pattern is called as type 5N pit. And if you observe the type 5N pit clearly, in that case, the lesion is considered to be deep submucosal invasive cancer. So the lesion is indicated for surgical resection. On the other hand, if Irregularity running, irregularly running pit pattern is seen. In that case, uh, we call the pit pattern as 5IP, and sometimes we judge the irregularity of the pit, and sometimes severe irregular running pit is observed. We call the pit pattern is 5I irregular, severe irregular. And in that case, sometimes the lesion shows a high grade dysplasia and sometimes the lesion shows a superficial submucosal invasive cancer and sometimes uh, the lesion shows the deep submucosal invasive cancer. And as you know, the most important point is the differentiation between the deep submucosal invasive cancer and others because deep submucosal <coughs> invasive cancer requires surgical treatment because of the potential for lymph node metastasis. So, how to differentiate how to differentiate between deep SM deep sum causal invasive cancer and the others? I'd like to introduce one very useful finding called invasive pattern. Uh, invasive pattern is defined as a demarcated area and the demarcated inside the demarcated area, if you see the five by severe irregular pits, in that case the lesion is as considered to be positive invasive pattern. So how about this lesion? After spraying the injo carmandai, uh, we can observe the demarcated area like this, demarcated area like this, and the inside the demarcated area, we can see a very severe irregular pit inside the lesion. In that case, the lesion is considered to be the positive invasive pattern. So, deep submucosal invasion is suspected and actually even despite the small size of the lesion, this patient was referred to a surgeon directly without the endoscopic resection because of the considering that the diagnosis being SM deep invasion. And actually this lesion is SM deep invasive cancer. And how about this lesion? Here, I would like to say that I would like to emphasize the imp importance of spraying the injo carmandai to evaluate the macroscopic type belly, belly clearly because first, here, it is difficult to diagnose the macroscopic type belly clearly. However, after spraying the injo carmandai, we can see a demarcated area here. So, we can easily understand that this flat elevated type lesion also has a depressed area inside the lesion. So we can judge this lesion has a demarcated area clearly here. And how about the inside the demarcation? Inside the demarcation, if we stained with crystal violet staining and evaluated inside the demarcated area, we can easily visualize a severe irregular pit. So this lesion is positive of invasive pattern. So we can diagnose easily this lesion is, must be deep submucosal invasive cancer. Actually, this lesion was cured with surgical treatment and pathological results show the SM deep cancer. Then how about this lesion? Also, after spraining the injo carmandai, we can see a demarcated area inside the lesion, demarcated area here. However, the difference uh, from the previous case is the pit pattern inside the demarcated area, different from the last case. In this case, the pit pattern itself is not so severely irregular, not so severely irregular here. So, yeah, at most 3S pit or 3L pit. So in this case, 
this region has a demarcated area. However, inside the demarcation, we cannot see the pi by severe irregularity. So this region is negative for invasive patterns. So this region is considered to be intramucosal lesion or at worst a superficial submucosal invasive cancer. So endoscopic resection is performed and actually pathological results show the intramucosal neoplastic lesion here. So using the crystal bile staining, very accurate diagnosis can be possible. And uh, let me show you the diagnostic accuracy of invasive pattern if performed by experts, very high a very accurate diagnosis can be possible. So uh, let me summarize the diagnosis using magnifying chromo endoscopy. So if you see the type 1 pit or type 2 pit, it indicates a non-neoplastic non pattern, so no treatment is required. On the other hand, a 3L pit or 3S pit or type 4 pit are observed. In that case, endos good indication for endoscopic treatment. And the 5L pit is observed. In that case, good indication for surgery. And if you see the 5 eye pit pattern and the severe irregular pit pattern, in that case, you have to see the how about the demarcation and how about the inside the demarcated area and if the lesion shows the positive invasive pattern in that case that lesion is good indication for surgery and if negative for invasive pattern good indication for endoscopic treatment and finally let me talk about the diagnosis of sesiosolated lesions uh, so called SSAP actually the diagnosis of SSAP is not established based on the genetic classification and pit pattern diagnosis however maybe as you know the diagnosis of sesiosolated lesion itself is fairly easy if you understand the characteristics of SSAP so in the white light imaging we can see First, detect the lesion because detection is very easy because usually the lesion is covered with the much mucus and we can detect this kind of lesion and the color of the lesion itself is the same with the background mucosa or a little bit whitish. And if you have the chroma endoscopy and magnify endoscopy, in that case, you can zoom inside the lesion and some Japanese colleagues um, named the uh, pit pattern characteristics of successor isolated lesion is type 2 open. Type 2 open is visualizes this figure, uh, this kind of pit pattern you can see here, you can see here. In that case, we can diagnose this lesion is sessile isolated lesion. And even without chroma endoscopy, using narrowband imaging and magnification, the pit pattern, so the surface pattern corresponding with the type 2 open pit pattern can be visualized here, uh, indicated by arrowheads here and here. And one more uh, characteristic of cis isolated lesion is this kind of vessels, this kind of a little bit thick vessels. Uh, cis isolated lesion often show that this kind of vessel. So if you see that this kind of vessel and this kind of surface pattern, we can easily diagnose this lesion is cis isolated lesion. So I use 20 minutes uh, for the lecture. And, uh, this is docs and uh, let's do quiz. I want to talk about docs, after docs, but uh, Let's move on. <laughs> so, next quiz, quiz. Могу сказать три слова. Я слушал перевод, здесь была ошибочка небольшая, русскоязычная. Итак, ямки эпители могут быть регулярные? Да? Второй, третий тип. Нерегулярные. Это пятый тип. И безструктурный. Вот эти три слова русских помогут вам очень хорошо понять, Что же мы с вами сейчас будем оценивать? Итак, регулярные – это хорошо, нерегулярные – немножко плохо, бесструктурные – совсем плохо. Презентацию тренинга поставьте.